Hi folks and welcome back. Sorry about the rain, but yeah, not a lot I can do about that. At the end of the last episode, we were firing up a bunch of bronze, uh, making up some alloy. And so I'm just in the process of, you know, I've, I've gotten all these ingots here and I'm just in the process of turning them into double ingots. So I throw two of them up, whoa, two of them up there like that. Take my hammer, shift, hit, comes a double ingot. And then I want to turn it into a bronze sheet. As you can see, I've practiced this time, so you don't have to watch me fumble around. Okay, so I've made up a whole bunch of these sheets. And indeed, I should have now 16 of them, yes. And the goal here is we now have to turn these into double sheets. And for that, very hot. Hot. All right. So let's get these reorganized so we can have a few that are all the same temperature. And so what we have to do is we have to warm these up until they hit welding temperature. And then the same as we did making the double ingots welding the single two single ingots into a double ingot we'll uh, weld two of these bronze sheets into a double bronze sheet so uh i'll probably do a time lapse here an exciting time lapse where you can watch that hot bar whiz on up and once that's done we'll go over to the anvil and knock out our double sheet Okay, so we have our two weldable sheets here. Stick them there, same deal. Hit shift, knock them together, and we have a double bronze sheet. Now I just have to do that seven more times. So I'll uh, bring you back in when that's all done. All right, the last two bronze sheets are almost there. There we go, they're at welding temperatures now. Weld them together. And that's our eighth double sheet. All right, we don't need anything in here anymore. Let's save ourselves some charcoal. And we can take our eight bronze double sheets on over to the crafting table. And do a little ring around the rosy. Eh? to give us, assuming the formula hasn't changed, ah, good, a bloomery block. Ah. All right, do I need food? Not really, I do need a bit of water though. It's really annoying that, that uh, my permanent water supply is no longer so permanent. Well, a lot of the snow has melted. The spring's just around the corner. I think it'll, I think it's after the 10th it'll be spring, but this is February, so does spring, I don't recall if spring starts in March in this game, or if I'm fooling myself and I've got longer to go, but, well, we'll find out. Okay, so now we have the bloomery block, we want to use that to build an actual bloomery. And where are my smooth andesite blocks? There they are. There's some of them, at any rate. And a fine place for our bloomery would be right here. Okay. Okay. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Um, I'll just... Yeah, I can incorporate it into here. Okay. Um, okay. All right. 
So it goes up here, over here, and then that becomes. Oh, so I didn't need to take those two out. No, oh, I'm building a forge, not a bloomery. All right, a moment while I go and check. I'll be back. No, actually, I was doing it right. It just, I guess it never struck me before. It's kind of odd just how similar in design the, uh, the bloomery and the forge are. Huh. Okay, do that. Take the dirt out. Got one more block to put there. And then we put our bloomery block in the front. And there we go. Add a ladder here so we can climb up to the top. Oh, and we want to make it a bit taller. I think you can go four high. I think you can go four high. We'll find out. All right, and that's our bloomery. So it's basically, you have the bloomery block here, and that's where the bloom will form, and then it's back, j just like the, um, whatchamacallit, just like the forge, it's got a, uh, oh, actually, I think I have done it wrong here. Yeah, I have done it wrong. Yeah, that needs to be empty there. Okay. There we go. This is going to be... Uh, let's... I'm a bit of a perfectionist here. This will work being dirt, but... It doesn't look nice. There we go. There we go. That's a nice tidy look I was going for. There we go. I'm actually surprised that it let me put the bloomery block in place before. So maybe there's a slight flaw in the code that'll let you <laughs> let you build a bloomery even if the chimney is blocked up. But anyway, what's supposed to be is you have this bloomery block and then behind it you have a chimney coming down. Yep. I suspect I've got one too high because I think it's just the chimney that has to be four high. And so my chimney is five high, but we'll find out. So the next thing we need to do before we can actually use the bloomery is we have to go and get some iron. So I think that's going to be our next... our next uh, excursion. So... Um, yeah, I'm set up here for the right map. So the iron was... Hematite, there we go. Oh, and some up here as well. So I'll go check out these two uh, hematite mines and uh, bring you in if I've got something interesting to show you. I mean, I'll show you some of the mines just so you can see what the ore looks like in place. But I won't uh, won't make you sit through too much of it. All right, bring you back in. Okay, I've uh, put some torches up so you can see what's going on here since, of course, it's night. Uh, I've laid down thatch blocks everywhere where I found a surface deposit. This is copper here. This is actually quite the uh, location. So there's copper, there's the hematite I found, and if you come over here, this is ethereum, or ethereum, or I can't remember what the hell it's called, actually. But um, but this means that there's clay under here. So, you know, you, you got just about everything you need to get going. Um, so, I also removed all the trees in between the thatch blocks. And, because that means that they'll show up on the map. Uh, if there's the trees are overhanging it, they'll show a tree instead of the block, but without the trees. And also I need the trees, I need the wood anyway for supporting the mine. So you can see it a little bit, the little yellow dots in the mini map in the upper left. 
but let's go to the bigger map. There we go. I'm really zoomed in here. So you can see where all the, you can really easily see where the thatch blocks are. So you can see that where I'm staying now is more or less the center of them. So that's cool. And the other thing I like to do is I like to make sure that my, uh, my little too wide hole that I dig is right under at least one of the thatch blocks because that improves the odds that my hole will actually intersect the, um, the deposit. Okay, so I'm going to dig down to that and, uh, and I'll bring you back in when I find some hematite and then we'll see what quality it is and you'll be able to see what it looks like in situ, as it were. Back in a bit. Well, as you can see, we've found our way to the uh, hematite. So it looks like it's kind of a pinkish thing. But if you look at it, I've already grabbed a few pieces, a couple of pieces. It's poor. So I'm going to go check the other deposit and hopefully it will at least be regular. And uh, I mean, this must be a poor neighborhood because I ran into that copper deposit before, you know, along the way and it was poor as well. So yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll bring you back in when I've, uh, when I've checked out the other site. Well, it's raining again. Uh, I had to come home to eat. And also, if we look at the calendar, March 3rd, uh, we're already into early spring. So that means we can start planting some crops, although there could still be a frost. So I'll have to try and plant whatever I think is hardy enough to survive it. But the other thing is if we come over here and have a look, our strawberry bush already has the strawberries on it. And I can't remember what this one is. Let's find out. But it has berries as well. It is gooseberry. Nothing on those. Nothing on those. So we already have some berries coming in. Those aren't going to be... We won't get enough... We don't have enough of any one plant. Of any one bush, rather. To get enough berries to make... Uh, uh, to make uh, wine out of... Make alcohol out of... Or brine, rather. Vinegar. That's the one, vinegar, well, which is needed for brewing. So, um, so I can just go ahead and eat those. Uh, for fruit, we're going to have to wait until one of our trees comes in. These are still too small to have fruit on them. This one's big enough, though. What is it? It's a lemon, yeah. I'm not sure when that comes in, but that will have some fruit. Um, so the other thing is, then we should start laying down some stuff. Now... This had green beans. Um, I don't know what nutrients were in the ground here, but it doesn't really matter because once the grass grows back over, um, you know, your tilled soil converts back into regular uh, soil with grass, then it gets all its nutrients back. So it's only this one out here that might have the wrong nutrients, but we'll see. And even if it's the wrong nutrients, that won't prevent the carrots from growing. It just means they'll grow more slowly. Okay, so I think carrots will survive the frost. What else do we have here that might... I believe maize is actually fairly hardy. So we might as well put it down the same place we had it before. do we have over here <clears throat> it might be hardy soybeans green beans yellow bell peppers garlics beets onions potato potato is probably hardy whoops should take it with me eh? oat i'd love to get the grains started but i but they will be affected by frost Ah, uh, we can try squash. Let's see how squash works out. Okay. Here's our potatoes. Three of them.
Well, I guess this is going to be the squash row now. And we can put the potatoes in here. And I should relabel this guy before I forget. Home. Oops, my tools are wearing out. Okay. All right, so I'm going to head back over to the uh, to where I'm trying to look at that second uh, iron deposit or hematite deposit. Because we have kind of an interesting situation there, so I'll bring you back in as soon as I get over there. Okay, I'm back at the uh, the other site where I'm looking for hematite, the other hematite deposit, and I found a uh, another red apple tree here. So I've grabbed a sapling from it. Add that to my collection back home, my orchard. So you can see the way it's laid out here. There's a, a bunch of deposit up here. There's a little bit over the hill too, and then a bunch here. And then if we come across over here, there's a bunch more here. I ran out of thatch blocks for marking all. But anyway, so if I if I start around here, like I, you can actually detect from surface level here. So you found a very large sample of andesite hematite. So it's very close to the surface. Um, so I was able to just you know triangulate it from the surface using the prospector's pick. And where the center of this deposit seems to be is. Uh, right about there, where that X is, or where my cursor is, rather. Um, so, given that, yeah, you can see some of the other ones there. So, I don't think that the endocyte deposit is going to be big enough to extend all the way over there. So, I suspect there are two deposits. And, uh, so, this one's underwater. It would probably be easier to go after the, that one up there under land. But this is more fun. So what I'm gonna so what I did is I brought with me some that's sand, I don't want sand. Smooth andesite, there we go. Brought with me some smooth andesite, and what I'll do, you can see I already started there, is uh, is build up a uh, what do they call these caissons? I think that's the technical term for them. When you want to work on uh, work underwater, and so build up a nice solid exterior, and to get rid of the water, we fill up the interior with dirt, which we can then dig out. And I have some ladders here. Good. All right. So I'm going to uh, continue on with this, and I'll bring you back in when I find the hematite. Well, that didn't take very long. Only had to go down like seven or eight blocks. I wasn't expecting it to take long. Because uh, given that I could detect it from the surface. So this time I haven't peaked, so I don't know yet what kind this is. We'll find out together. I have to get rid of some crap. I don't need the dirt. Or the gravel. Or the rock. Okay, well at least it's regular hematite. I can make do with that. You know, I'll just mine a bunch of this stuff out and then we can go back and make some iron. So I'll see you in a bit. Well, look at that. There's all that nice hematite that I've got. So this is all the regular stuff. So there's 25 per. And then this is the poor. I picked up a bit of the poor so we can help, you know, make, make numbers. When we're trying to make up a uh, a vessel full of iron, well, a melt full of iron, I guess it won't matter as much. Yeah, it won't matter as much with the bloomery, but might later on. 
and then this is just small stuff, the surface ones that I picked up. And I got some coal here and a fire starter. So let's go over how this is all going to work. Okay. Um, oh, before I do that, I got to eat. <laughs> and this is the last of the food. I think I've got a garlic. <laughs> oh, put him in here. <clears throat> uh, but if you look at the date, March 8th, so in two more days we're into middle summer. Mm, I don't know how quickly any of this stuff will be growing in. I should probably plant the onions, but let's uh, let's do our iron first. So we're gonna need a bunch of iron. Okay, got that. And okay. So the first thing you have to do, I believe, is you have to put eight coal or charcoal in the bottom here. Okay. Then you come up top. And you get to dump in your hematite. And then you need an equal amount. Yeah, okay. So you need an equal amount of charcoal. And you'll see that I've got hematite and charcoal floating around. I'll just do this just in case, but yeah. So what I said earlier is correct, is that the bloomery can only be four high, and I've got mine five high here. And so that's, it was only filling up to four. I can take these off. Oops. And then we take our fire starter and click it on the bloomery block. And it's going to be a few hours before we'll have some iron. Oh, I threw in some small hematite. Oh, that's why it's... Oh, no, there it is there. Okay. Yeah, so I think the way it works is you can have eight per level in the bloomery. So I have four levels, so I was allowed to put in 32, and that cost me 32 coal, charcoal, rather. But I'm not sure about that. Now it only ended up cost me 24 charcoal and 24. So maybe, so maybe it's a, it's considered to be three high and that's the maximum you can have. Well, we'll see when we get it out. Uh, in the meantime, I'm, since I have no plant food that I can eat, I'm going to go hunt something down before I'm too weak to be able to, <laughs> to uh, take it out. So let's see, what do we have? We had, we have deer running around all over the place, right? Here, deer. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, there's a pheasant. He'll do for food. Another pheasant. Okay. Like something a little, uh, a little more filling than pheasant. Ah, I heard a deer up there.
there's a deer up here somewhere. Oh, well, maybe it was down on the, uh, down on the beach, but around the, oh, there's a deer there. There we go. How much is that? Two chicken. Oh, 10 raw venison. That'll do me. That'll do me. Well, the other thing I found out from reading, I think it was reading Wikipedia, is that while you can cook food in the forge, uh, if you do so, it uh, spoils sooner than if you cook it over a fire. So let's form an actual, let's get an actual fire out here instead then. So we are going to need, I can put that away. So what we need is some sticks, which we have, and a log, which is easily acquired. And let's build it under the eaves here so it won't get rained, it's rained on. Okay. Oh, forgot I need some, <laughs> some additional logs for fuel. There we go. Pheasant. Actually, I could make some glass and then have pheasant under glass. Oh yeah, let's uh, chow down on the stuff. There we go. Okay, so this stuff says it'll decay in 14 days. So we'll do a comparison. that stuff works out. See if what I read was correct. days versus 14 yet yeah, so it spoils three days sooner interesting all right so where's the that's 11 that's a 14. 14. Those are the 11 day guys. Okay. That should hold me until our uh, veggies start coming in. You can see the bloomer block is still lit up, so it's not done yet.
And in fact, this is probably a good place to call it because uh, processing, we don't just get, <laughs> of course not, this is TFC, you don't just straight get your iron out of there that you can work with. You don't get an ingot out of there. You get a bloom and it has to be worked and split up and further worked. <clears throat> Iron's a lot more complicated than copper or bronze. So we'll, uh, we'll devote next episode to that. And, uh, and maybe oh, we will probably end up planting some more crops as well. What's the temperature like? Nine point five, and the minimum for this region right now is minus four. Yeah, see, it could still go f freezing. So I think I might just end up waiting two. Oh, it's already April first. Oh, our two the two days have passed. Okay, well, yeah. So we'll definitely end up planting more s crops next episode and uh, dealing with this bloom once it's done. So thanks you thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope to see you back. Bye.